Hello everybody, this is Clem Z. Clements and I'm reaching you live from Ivano Franke City, Ukraine. I want to welcome every one of you to my platform this evening. I know it's been a long time, it's been a while since I last um, did a broadcast, but thank God I'm, I'm back again. So I want to welcome every one of you to this platform and as you're coming in, I would like to plead with you to help me share the video. <laughs> I can see Mr. Richard Adewali, you're welcome. I also saw Daniel, Ambassador, you're welcome. Charles, you're welcome. I'm glad to see every one of you again. You know, it's, it's been, I think it's close to two months now since I last um, came live. Yeah, Mrs. Taylor, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you. Yeah, Dr. Helvi, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you. Mr. Richard. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy seeing all of you. Ben Ofori, you're welcome. Yes, thank you, Mr. Charles. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, you know, uh, I've been busy. I've been really busy. But thank God um, I've been able to squeeze out this time to come live. Miss Emerald, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. I'm so happy, I don't know, but I'm, I'm so happy seeing all of you again. Uh, today, uh, we're doing a teaching. Excel Nuga, you're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Tim Carrington, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you. My brother Adeni Alabi, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you on the platform. Please, as you're coming in, just help me share the video. And let's get ready to study God's word. Thank you, team. I appreciate your presence here. Uh, please, if you, if you are joining us for the first time, you just need to get a Bible. Uh, any translation that you could, you can lay your hand on. Just get the Bible. We're going to be reading the scriptures uh, in the next few minutes. But meanwhile, just invite your friends, share the video, and get your friends to come. Plutonic talk, but you're welcome on the platform. Yes, this is Ezine is here. You're welcome. I'm glad to have you. I'm sure you're going to like today's uh, topic, Ms. Ezine. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure that you are going to partake in this topic today because it's something that um, I noticed that you are interested in. Adeni Alabi, you're welcome. King Priest, you're welcome. Yes, he has made us king and priest unto our God. I love your name, King Priest. You're welcome on the platform. So please help me share the video and invite your friends and then get your Bibles and let's start looking at the scripture. Now, I actually intended to, uh, you know, start the book of Hebrews, you know, with my brother, Mr. Richard, and we're still going to do that, okay? We, we started um, Romans, we finished Romans, and then we moved into Galatians, and I think we did, you know, about 90% of Galatians before we went on break, uh, but this time around, we are going to be coming back again with the book of Hebrews, you know, but tonight uh, I'm going to be looking at a subject that um, is a bit debatable, you know, I've seen a lot of people debate whether um, they, they, what I'm, I'm going to discuss tonight, if it is a sin or if it is not a sin, you know, and that is the topic of unbelief. So today I'm looking at unbelief and I titled my video, uh, Unbelief, the Sin of the World. And in this video also, we're also going to look at the possibility of um, a believer expressing unbelief because there is a debate about whether uh, if someone was a believer, if it's possible for that person to now become an unbeliever. You know, there's an ongoing debate about that. So we're going to address that today to see the possibility of a believer, you know, losing salvation when, he, when that believer becomes an unbeliever if that were possible, okay? So we're going to be looking at that today. Okay, now I want to believe you've shared the video. Michael, you're welcome. Sam Adenuga, you're welcome. Sam, glad to have you. Now, today, we are going to start our Bible reading from the book of, uh, I think, John. Let's start from John. Let's start from the book of John. John chapter 16. That is where we're going to start from today. John chapter 16. Victoria, you're welcome on the platform. I'm glad to have you. So, John chapter 16, everybody, please get your Bibles and let's look at John chapter 16. Now, why am I interested in this topic? One of the reasons I'm interested in this topic is because uh, 
there are a lot of unbelievers, a lot of atheists, and people who do not really believe in Jesus Christ, but who want to enjoy the benefits that came with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. I've heard people say that even though we don't believe in this Jesus, as long as what he did on the cross is for the whole world, then we can benefit from it also. But these same people deny the lordship of Jesus Christ. And they say that there is no, there is no such you know, uh, person as Jesus Christ. That like he never existed. And some said that um, you know, even if he existed, you know, he, the death he died on the cross was not foreseen. You know, that um, you know, he was, he was uh, condemned by the Jewish people and by the Roman Empire. And they killed him you know, uh, because he committed treason. But these same people who do not believe in this Jesus claim, they want to claim eternal life. They want to claim salvation on the basis of that same Jesus that they do not really believe. And so that is one reason why I'm interested in this, in this topic today because I'm going to be proving to them that it is impossible to not believe in Jesus and want to partake in the you know, partake of the eternal life that he brought. Another reason I'm interested in this topic is because a lot of people have said that once saved is not always saved. Why? Because they say there is a possibility of a believer becoming an unbeliever. And so, we cannot say that once saved is always saved. So that is one argument. And so because of that, I'm also interested in this topic today. And then lastly, the third reason why I'm interested in this topic is because some people have said that unbelief is not a sin. And that unbelief is not a sin. And that if unbelief were to be a sin, then all of us would have at one point in our lives doubted something or, you know, you know, had unbelief in something. But I'm going to show today that when we talk about unbelief, we're not talking about just any kind of unbelief. We're talking about unbelief in Christ. Thank you, Pastor Doris Ngeri. You're welcome. I'm glad to have you on the platform. So let's go to John chapter 16 and let's begin from there. Let's see what unbelief is. Now, I'm going to appreciate if you will be able to, you know, um, help me post the Bible quotations on the comment section and then uh, you know participate in, in the teaching like I, like I said uh, like I always say when we come here we're not coming to just teach we're also coming to learn so I will appreciate your input I will appreciate you know your comment and your questions and your contributions you know I will appreciate them okay uh, Mr. Yomi Jagere you're welcome I'm glad to have you again so John chapter 16 let's look at it now, this was Jesus speaking in John chapter 16 from verse 8 to 11. John chapter 16 from verse 8 to 11. So let's see what it says, what unbelief is. The Bible said that this is Jesus speaking concerning the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. He said, and when he has come, when he has come, talking about the Holy Spirit, he will convince the world of sin. Now pay attention to this. I'm using the living Bible for this. He said when he has come, he will convince the world of sin and of the availability of God's goodness. King James said righteousness. And of deliverance from judgment. Verse 9. Now pay attention to verse 9. The word's sin is unbelief. I love this translation because it was clearly stated here that the sin of the word is unbelief. So the word's sin is unbelief. In me. Now you see, not just kind of not just any kind of unbelief. 
Jesus specifically said that the world's sin is unbelief in me, that is unbelief in him. So that unbelief in Jesus Christ is the sin of the world. Right? Okay. Verse 10. Now, before I read verse 10, I want to say something here. The Bible said, that John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. Now, which sin of the world was he talking about? Is it this one that Jesus is talking about here? Now, pay attention to sin of the world. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. That is John the Baptist when he saw Jesus. But here Jesus himself is saying that the sin of the world is unbelief. So, is John or was John and Jesus referring to the same sin? What do you think? Before, uh, when John made that statement concerning Jesus, that behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world, right? Jesus had not died then. But John recognized him as a Messiah and as a Savior who came to take away the sin of the world. But then, before Jesus left, he told his disciples, he said, when the Spirit whom I will send to you, when that Spirit comes, he will convince the world of sin and of God's goodness, that is righteousness, and of judgment. And then he went ahead to say that of sin because they believe not in me. That is King James. And then the Living Bible says, it will convey the word of sin because the word sin is unbelief. So, now let's look at it. John the Baptist was talking about Jesus coming to take away the sin of the world. But that sin that Jesus came to take away was not the sin of unbelief. Now follow me closely. The sin that Jesus came to take away was not the sin of unbelief in him. No. He came to take away the sin that Adam brought into the world. I say that again. When John the Baptist said that behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world, he was not referring to the sin of unbelief in Christ. He was only referring to the sin that Adam brought into the world and every other sin that followed that one. Now, why? Because Romans told us, Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 5 told us that by one man, sin came into the world and death by that sin. And then the same Apostle Paul told us in that same Romans 5 that Jesus Christ brought righteousness. That is, he came to you know, remove that sin that Adam brought. So Adam brought sin, right? But Jesus came, you know, to take away sin, the sin that Adam brought. Adam, you know, brought condemnation and judgment into the world, but Jesus came to bring justification into the world. So when John the Baptist talked about the sin that Jesus was going to take away, he wasn't referring to the sin of unbelief. So pay attention to that. Because the sin of the world then was not unbelief. The sin of the world then was disobedience. Now, the sin of the world was disobedience to God. That was what Adam, you know, and Eve did. They disobeyed God in the garden. But I also have, as I've taught before also, that the reason why they disobeyed God was linked to unbelief also. So we could look at it two ways. Now, why did I say that? I said that because Adam and Eve did not believe that they were already made like God. And so they wanted to be like God. So because they didn't believe that they were already like God and they wanted to be like God, they displayed an element of unbelief. And that was why they had to, you know, eat the fruit to want to be like God when they were already made in the image and likeness of God. So that is unbelief. Now, what sin is Jesus talking about here when he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he shall convince the word of sin. And then he said, the word sin is unbelief. So this unbelief now is different. This sin of unbelief is different from the sin that Jesus came to take away. And I'm going to show you that, I'm going to show you, you know, maybe today, 
that unbelief, the sin of unbelief in Christ was not taken away. The only way for that sin to be forgiven or the only way for that sin to be taken away is for the person to believe. Not that he will keep on remaining in unbelief and expect the sacrifice of Jesus to take away that sin of unbelief. No, it doesn't work that way. And I'm going to show you today. So let's continue John chapter 16. John 16. I saw Anthony Abraham, you're welcome. Aziz Gomez, you're welcome. My brother Kenneth, you're welcome on the platform. I'm glad to have every one of you today. So let's go back to um, John chapter 16. I read again from verse 8. And when he has come, he will convince the world of its sin and of the availability, right? And of the availability of God's goodness and of deliverance from judgment. The word sin is unbelief in me. So Jesus defined what the sin of the world is. That sin of the world that the Holy Spirit will convince the world of. Because by the time the Holy Spirit is coming, Jesus would have died already. And the world now is expected to believe in him. So anybody who refuses to believe in him, then that becomes a sin to that person. So the sin of the world would be unbelief after Jesus left. So by the time the Holy Spirit came, by the time the Holy Spirit came, Anybody who did not believe in Jesus Christ, then that unbelief becomes his sin. Alright? Let's go ahead. Then, verse 10, John 16, verse 10, the Bible says, there is righteousness available. Now, pay attention. There is righteousness available. So, when the Spirit comes, it will testify of righteousness, the availability of righteousness. Mr. Tuka, you're welcome, so I'm glad to have you. So when the Spirit comes, he will testify of the availability of righteousness. Why? Because when Jesus came, he brought in everlasting righteousness. Because Daniel had prophesied in Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 that when he come, right, he will make an end of sin and then bring in everlasting righteousness. And so that was what Jesus did. So when the Spirit came, after Jesus died and resurrected, the Spirit now comes with a testimony. And what is that testimony? That righteousness is available. And who are those people that benefit from that righteousness? Everyone who believes. For everyone who believes is counted righteous before God. Why? Because Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. So, the Spirit now is testifying that righteousness is available. And all those who believe, they have that righteousness already. But for the world who, that, who do not believe in Jesus Christ, their sin is unbelief. Now, every other sin that the world commits, or every other sin that the world has committed, Jesus took it away. And what is standing before the world and Christ now is unbelief. So anyone who believes that Jesus paid for his sins, that Jesus took away the sin of the world, such a person is justified and declared righteous. But those who do not believe that Jesus took away the sin of the world, that he died for their sins, then those ones now have a new sin, which is unbelief. And this unbelief, I'm going to show you that there is no way to get rid of it except by believing. That sacrifice on the cross does not take away the sin of unbelief because the sin of unbelief is actually rejecting that sacrifice and not believing in what Jesus has done on the cross. So there is no other way to get rid of that sin. That is why Hebrews said that there is no other sacrifice for sin. Why? Because if you don't believe in the only sacrifice, that was offered on the cross for your sins, if you don't believe it, there is no other sacrifice. That is why it is very important that everybody believes in Jesus Christ. Because when you believe in him, then all your sins are forgiven. No matter how many they are, they are forgiven. But when you don't believe in the only sacrifice that takes away sin, how else 
will you be saved? There is no other way. That is why the writer of Hebrews says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? You see, the salvation has been provided already through the cross. But if you don't believe in that cross, how shall you escape? There is no other sacrifice again. Now, your refusal to believe in what Jesus has done on the cross is what is called the willful sin. That was the willful sin that the Hebrews was talking about. That is, if we sin willfully, after understanding, you know, the, the availability of forgiveness, if we sin willfully, after we know the truth of forgiveness, after we know that grace is available, if we refuse that grace, if we reject that cross, if we say we don't want that sacrifice, that Jesus, if we, if we refuse it, then that is willful sin or the sin of unbelief. And you know what the Bible said? The Bible said there is no other sacrifice. There is no way to get rid of that sin. Why? Because the only sacrifice that, took, that takes away sin, you have rejected it. And so, nobody can help you anymore. You are without help. So the only solution is to believe. But I'm going to show you what God does, you know, with, with people like that who do not believe. Let's see. Let's go ahead. So now, verse, verse 11. Was well, it just one verse? I've been explaining one verse. John chapter 16. That's where we've been since. So John 16 verse 11 now says, There is deliverance from judgment because the prince of this world has already been judged. So what do I want you to know from John chapter 16 verse 8 to 10? What I want you to know is that there is only one sin that is standing before God and the world. There is only one sin. Now, Jesus took away every sin. Jesus took away all the sins of the world. Whether it is adultery, fornication, lying, murder, hatred, anger, whatsoever sin it is. When John the Baptist was saying, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, all other sins were in that statement that John the Baptist made. And Jesus took all of them away. And so, sin was taken away from the world. But whoever now refuses to believe that sin was taken away by, from the world by the sacrifice of Jesus, whoever disbelieves the cross, whosoever takes for granted and despises what Jesus has done on the cross, such a person now manufactures or now has a new sin that is unbelief. And there is no way to get rid of that sin. I love the way the Living Bible rendered that Hebrews chapter 10. If we have time, we'll read it today. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 30, 38 down. You know, you will see where the, Hebrew, um, the Living Bible was saying that if we sin willfully, that is, if we keep on living in unbelief, after we know that forgiveness is available, after we know that the cross has paid for sin, and we refuse to believe, if we keep on in that unbelief, he said there is no way to get rid of that sin. Because the only way to get rid of sin is what you are rejecting. That is why. Now listen to this. I want to, I want to speak to those atheists now. Those atheists who are saying that, you know, they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They don't even believe that there is God. But they want to have the righteousness that can only be gotten through the cross. They say that, okay, if Jesus died for the whole world, right, then he also died for them. But they say they don't believe in him. So if they don't believe in him, if they don't believe in him, how do they expect to have their sins forgiven? Because the Bible told us that only those who believe in him, only those who believe in him will not be condemned. The rest who do not believe, they are condemned. So if you say you are an atheist and you say you don't believe in him, and at the same time you are claiming that the death that he died also paid for your sins, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's confusion. It is either you believe that he is the Messiah and that he died for your sins and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, or you, or you deny him and say you don't believe in him. There is no such thing as saying that I don't believe in him 
But if you people say, say that he died for our sin, then also my sins are included and, you know, I'm, 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 I have eternal life now. But I don't believe in him. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I'm going to show you today. Now, so let's go. Let's, let's proceed now. Let's continue. Now, go to John chapter 3, verse 18. John 3, 18. Now, I want you to pay attention to this sin of unbelief. Is it possible for believers to have this sin of unbelief? Do believers have this sin of unbelief? The question answers itself. I already call them believers. So if I'm calling them believers, it means that they are no longer in unbelief. So believers do not have this sin. Why? Because they already believe. So those who believe do not have this sin. That is why Jesus said the sin of the world. He didn't say the sin of the believer is unbelief. No, the sin of the world. That is the world, those who do not believe, who are outside of Christ. Now let's go ahead. John chapter 3 verse 18. Now look at this. John 3, 18. But don't forget John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have what everlasting life. So if whoever believes in him is not going to perish, then what will happen to those who do not believe in him? The answer is as good as mine. They are going to perish. If you don't believe, if you reject the sacrifice, if you don't believe in the only begotten Son of God, you are going to perish. Why? Because the Bible said that only those who believe in Him will not perish. Now let's go ahead. John 3, 18. John 3, 18. The Bible said, He who believes in Him is not judged. If you can copy the quotation and paste it there for me, I will appreciate anybody, please. John 3, 18. The Bible said, He who believes in him is not judged. Really? You mean he who believes in him is not judged? I mean, that is too heavy for religious minds. How could you say that he that believeth in him is not judged? When believers are all afraid of judgment day, Ah. And here Jesus is saying, or whoever wrote John, John is saying here, that he who believes in him is not judged, is not condemned. That is why I know that if you believe in him, <laughs> if you believe in him, you are not judged, you are not condemned. Now, let's go ahead. He who does not believe, now watch this. He who does not believe has been judged already or has been condemned already because he has not believed. Now the question is this. Why is he judged or why is he condemned? Is it because of fornication? No. Because of adultery? No. Because of lying? No. Because of hatred? No. Because of anger? No. Because of malice? No. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. He who believes in him is not judged. Why is he not judged? Because he doesn't have anger problems? No. <laughs> because he doesn't tell lies? No. The only reason why he is not judged is because he believes in him. Then, he who does not believe is condemned already or is judged already. Why is he being judged and why is he being condemned? The Bible gave the answer. It says, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The only reason why he is condemned, the only reason why he is judged <coughs> The only reason why he will perish is because he had not believed in the name of the Son of God. Now, that is why I'm so sure, I'm so certain, I'm so convinced that everyone who believes in Jesus Christ 
will never be judged. They will never be condemned. Why? Because the Bible said so. Because they have passed from death to life already. They passed from death to life. And so they will not be judged anymore. You know why? Because the only sin that is available now, which is not supposed to be called sin, so to speak, because Jesus took away the sin of the world, but just so that you know, you know, we, we can better explain it to people, is that the only sin available now is unbelief. And we, I saw it all through scriptures that anybody who believed in Jesus Christ received forgiveness of sins. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ receives justification. But those who do not believe, they cannot be justified. Those who do not believe, they are judged and they are condemned. So the Bible says. So if you have believed already, then you don't have that sin of unbelief. You don't have it because you're already a believer. It means that you, you will not be judged. On the day of judgment, right? On the day of judgment, Christ is going to be standing in your place. Now, I want to say this again. On the day of judgment, Jesus Christ is going to be standing in your place. Why? Because in him you live, move, and have your being. Christ is our life. So on that day of judgment, he is the one who will appear. So the Bible says, when he will appear, we shall appear with him in glory. Why? Because he is our head and we are his body. So we have been exempted from this judgment. Why? Because this judgment is only for those who do not believe. So the judgment of whether we will have eternal life or not, we have already received eternal life. So we are not going to be standing for this judgment. Only the world who do not believe will be standing for this judgment and to be condemned. And in fact, they've been condemned already. But for you and I, the only thing we are looking for or we are waiting for is to receive rewards. We are going to be rewarded. So that's what we are looking for. That is why um, John wrote in 1 John chapter 4, he said, Herein is our love made perfect that we might have boldness on the day of judgment. You know why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. So on the day of judgment, we are not going to be afraid of anything. Why? Because we know that we are standing as him or he is standing in our place. Because we are in him and he is in us. He is the head and we are his body. That is why I want to dare you if you have not believed in the gospel, if you have not believed in Jesus, do yourself a favor and believe. You know why? Because the Bible said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How shall we escape? The only way of escape is the cross. And if you reject the cross, there is no other way of escape. You are going to stand before God and be condemned if you don't believe. And in fact, the Bible said you are condemned already. But the only solution to that is believe. Once you believe, you come into Christ. And there is therefore now no condemnation. There is therefore now no judgment for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now let's go ahead. So the sin of the world is unbelief. But believers don't have that sin because believers already believe. Okay. John chapter 3. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 36. We are still in John chapter 3, verse 36. Now I, I believe that anybody who reads John chapter 3 will understand the gospel. Just John chapter 3 alone will understand the gospel. Why? Because in John chapter 3, you see the confidence that comes when we believe in Christ. And you see what happens to those who do not believe. Jesus gave us 100% assurance of our salvation in John chapter 3, in John chapter 5, in John chapter 6. But you will see it here again. Now, John chapter 3, verse 36. The Bible said, 
he who believes in the Son has eternal life. Why does he have eternal life? Because he believes in the Son. Not no that thing. No. Not because of any self-righteous works. Nothing at all. Just because he believes. Only because of belief. So because he believes, he believes he has what? Eternal life. But he who does not believe the Son will not see life. He who does not believe the Son will not see life. He who does not believe the Son will not see life. Now, I want to say this again. He who does not believe the Son, that is Jesus Christ, he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. Why will he not see life? Is it because God could not forgive his fornication? No. Is it because God could not forgive his adultery? No. Is it because God could not forgive his hatred? No. Is it because God could not forgive his lying? No. Is it because God could not forgive his cheating? No. The only reason why he will not see life is because he did not believe in the Son of God. If he believes in the Son of God, every other sin I listed are taken care of. Why? Because Jesus came to take away every sin. And so once every sin is taken away, everybody is invited to come and receive eternal life by believing. But if anyone refuses to believe in what Jesus has done on the cross, then such a person, the Bible said, will not see life. And the reason he will not see life is not because his sins are too numerous, no. The only reason he will not see life is not because his sins are too red. Do you know what the Bible said in Isaiah? Isaiah 1 verse 18. He said, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. He said, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. He said, though they are as red as crimson, they shall be as wool. You know why? Because it does not matter how, how red your sins are. It does not matter how deep and how grievous your sins are. The Bible said, if you can come to believe in Jesus Christ, he said, those sins that are as red as scarlet, he said, they shall become as white as snow. Have you seen snow before? Snow. Pure snow, white as snow. In other words, he's going to purify you and cleanse you as white as snow. Irrespective of how numerous your sins are, if only you will come to believe in him. Let your sins be as red as crimson. He said they shall become as white as wool. You know wool? You know how white wool is? Pure, without blemish, without spots. That is how you will become if you believe in Jesus Christ. But if you refuse to believe the sacrifice, if you refuse to believe the cross, if you refuse to take advantage of the salvation that has been offered for us, then the Bible said you will not see life. And there is no other way of escape. No other way of escape. Let's go ahead. <laughs> It didn't end there. It didn't end there. Now watch this. Not only that he will not see life, those who do not believe, not only that he will not see life, the Bible said, you know what the Bible said? The Bible said, but the wrath of God abides on him. I want to read that again. John 3, 36. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. He said, but he who does not believe the Son one, shall not see life. Two, the wrath of God abides on him. You mean the wrath of God abides on him? Now, that wrath of God that abides on those who do not believe, it is unfortunate that most believers are still afraid of that wrath of God. They say, oh, the wrath of God is coming upon the earth. God is going to be pouring out his anger and his wrath upon the earth. And so, that wrath of God, the Bible told us here that that wrath of God is abiding on who? On those who do not believe. 
But for those who believe, they have no business being afraid of the wrath of God. You know why? Because the Bible told us that you should wait on his son from heaven. Even Jesus, who delivered us from the wrath to come. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have been delivered already from the wrath to come. I think that should be in uh, maybe Second Thessalonians. I, I can't get the exact place now. He said, and to wait for his son from heaven. Even Jesus, who delivered us from the wrath to come. So those of us who believe, we have been delivered already from the wrath that is coming. <laughs> we have been delivered already. That is why you, as a believer, you have no reason to be afraid of the wrath of God. You have no business with the wrath of God at all. Because the wrath of God only abides on the children of disobedience. Who are they? Who are those children of disobedience? Those who refuse to believe the gospel. That is why we the place I read just now, some translation use the word obey. Now, I think NIV said, he who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son. What is that obedience there? Believe. Faith. Faith. Obedience of faith. So, if you already have that faith, then you have obeyed. And so the wrath of God is coming on the children of disobedience, not on those who have faith. I know religious people like threatening you with that play. They say, oh, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. We are not the children of disobedience. Why? Because we have obeyed the gospel. We have obeyed the gospel, and that is faith. And because we have obeyed the gospel, the Bible said that Jesus has delivered us already from the wrath that is to come. Why? Because for God has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation. God bless you, sir. Samson. God had not appointed us unto wrath. We do not have any appointments with God when it has to do with the wrath of God. No. The only appointment we have with God is to receive salvation. The only appointment we have with God is unto salvation. Why? Because we have been delivered from the wrath of God that is coming. How were we delivered from the wrath of God? Because we stopped committing sin or we stopped lying? No. We were only delivered from the wrath of God because we believed. Only that faith in Christ was what delivered us. That is why the Bible is telling us here that those who do not believe, they are condemned. They will not see life. And the wrath of God abides with them. But glory to God, we have believed. And we are calling on all those who have not believed. We are calling on the world that salvation is available. Righteousness is available. Because the Spirit is calling and convincing the world and telling the world that the only sin that I have against you now is that sin of unbelief. The only sin that is preventing you from assessing me is unbelief. I have paid for all your sins. I sent my son to die on the cross for you. Believe and have eternal life. Believe and have justification. That is what we are doing. We are telling the world that they have to accept the gospel and they must believe the gospel if they want to be saved. Because there is no other way of escape. But for us who believe, we have passed from death to life already. And the wrath of God is not coming upon us. Because we already believe. We already believe. The only appointment we have unto God, the only appointment we have with God is unto salvation and not unto wrath. Why? Because we believe. You know, you know, God poured his wrath on Jesus on that cross. He took the punishment for our sins. He was despised and rejected. He was wounded for our transgression. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we were healed. The Bible said that it pleased God to crush him. It pleased the Father to crush him and to make his soul an offering for sin. And the Bible said, when he had made his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. <laughs> he shall see his seed. Why? Because 
Jesus was going to give birth to many children when his soul had been made an offering for sin. Because that corn of wheat had to fall to the ground to die, that he might bring forth much fruit. So he took the pain, he took the wrath of God, he took the, the punishment and the anger of God on the cross. He was crushed. It pleased God to crush him so that you and I will not be crushed again. The Bible said that Jesus tasted death for all men so that you and I will not die again. But if any man refuses to accept this Jesus, who tasted death for him, what that man is saying is that I want to taste death by myself. <laughs> I want to say that again. If anybody refuses the Jesus who has tasted death for all men, that person is saying that I want to taste death by myself. That is why they who do not believe will not see life. Why? Because the wrath of God abides with them. The wrath of God abides with them. But if you believe, Jesus already tasted death for you. And you will not die anymore. Why? Because whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. But they that do not believe, they will not see life. They are going to taste death by themselves. Because they have refused the one who tasted death on their behalf. If God could crush his son for you, and the only thing required of you is just to believe, only believe. God is not even saying, okay, keep ten commandments or keep certain so, so commandments or obey this rule and that rule. No. The only rule that you are required to obey now is faith that worketh by love. That is it. Why? Because in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything. What matters is faith that worketh by love. You are just called to believe and have eternal life. That is all that you need. Now, so that you will not face death. But you will have eternal life. So what is unbelief? Unbelief is the sin of the world. For the believers, unbelief is not our sin. Because we already believe. And because we believe, we have passed from death to life already. We have passed from death to life already. Now, um, the place of scripture that says that um, we have passed from death to life, that should be in John. In John. We have passed from death to life already. Somebody can help me get that place. I want to, I want to read it. We have, I have passed from death. To John chapter 5 verse 24. Now John 5 24. John 5 24. Still talking about belief and unbelief. John 5 24. Look at what the Bible said. The Bible said, Verily, or truly, truly. Now when the Bible uses the word truly, truly. Now listen to this. Truly, truly. Jesus is trying to tell you how sure, how certain that thing he's about to say is. Whenever you hear the word verily, verily, I say unto you. Or truly, truly, I say unto you. Or most assuredly, I say unto you. They know that Jesus is not joking. Whenever you hear that, he's not joking at all. He means what he's saying. So, the Bible said, verily, verily, I say unto you. Whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life two places we have seen that said that we will not be judged the first one we saw <laughs> hallelujah the first one we saw was in John uh, chapter 3 we saw a place in John chapter 3 verse 18 John 3 18 said he who believes in him is not judged. That one. Then now, John chapter 5 again is saying that whoever believes has eternal life and will not be judged. Why will he not be judged? Because he has already crossed <laughs> from death to life. Now listen guys. Listen. I know most of you are afraid of judgment day. Most believers, you are afraid of judgment day. I know you are afraid of hellfire. I know you are afraid of the lake of fire. But the Bible said that I should tell you that he who believes will not be judged. Why? Because he has passed from death to life already. Those who are or have already passed from death to life, they will not be judged. They will not be condemned. They will not be cast into the lake of fire. Why? Because they have believed. Jesus tasted death for them. 
and they have taken his yoke upon themselves. <laughs> they have become one with him. They are united with him now. So it is impossible for them to face death. So John chapter 5, verse 24. I told you that John 3, John 4, John 5, John 6, even John 8, this scripture that these passages are loaded with assurance of salvation. But it, I wonder why Christians don't see it. Why most Christians still read this? They read the teachings of Jesus and they still cannot see that assurance of salvation. I have shown you two scriptures telling you that you will not be judged. Some translation said you will not be condemned if you believe in Jesus. Why? Because you have been judged already. You have been judged. You have already been judged. And you have been justified. The verdict of God concerning you now is that you are not guilty of sin. That is the verdict. Because of what Jesus did and you are in Christ, the verdict of God is that you are not guilty. Who shall lay a charge against God's elect? Who shall lay a thing to the charge of God's elect? He said, it is God that died. But rather, that is Christ that died, but rather who is at the right hand of God making intercession for us. The, living, the Good News Translation said, who shall accuse God's chosen people? He said, God himself declares them not guilty. As Romans chapter 8, maybe from verse 18 down, Romans chapter 8, he said, who shall accuse God's chosen people? He said, God himself declares them not guilty. Why? Because they have been judged already and they have been declared righteous. So the verdict of God for you already is that you are not guilty of sin. That is why I know that you have passed from death to life already. And there is nothing to be afraid of. All we need to do is just worship God you know, in spirit and in truth. Just love on him and express his love to your neighbors and to everybody. That is all that is required of you now. As regarding judgment, you will not be judged. You will not be condemned if you believe in him. Why? Because the Bible said you have crossed from death to life already. You have crossed from death to life. You have crossed from death to life. So how can people who have crossed from death to life still be afraid of judgment day how is it possible that people who will not be judged are afraid of judgment day why those who will be judged are not even afraid of judgment day i mean unbelievers are living their life they don't even care they don't even they are not afraid of judgment day but you who have passed from death to life already you who jesus said you will not be judged you are the one afraid of judgment day something must be wrong somewhere Somebody must have taught you a wrong gospel, a false gospel. That is why you are afraid. If anybody should be afraid of Judgment Day, then it should be those who have not believed the gospel. For we who have believed, we have passed from death to life already. So, what is our topic? Unbelief. The sin of the world. For believers, we don't have that sin. And because we don't have that sin, we have eternal life, we have been justified, we have righteousness, we have passed from death to life already. But for those who have refused to believe, who still have the sin of unbelief, they are the ones who should be afraid of judgment day, who should be, who should be afraid of the wrath of God that is coming. Now let's go ahead with, with Bible verses. John chapter 8, John 8.24. Now, Jesus did something here that I would love you to pay attention to. John chapter 8, verse 24. Now, how many of you know that when Jesus came, he came for one reason? And that reason was to take away the sin of the world. And that was what John the Baptist said. Now, behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin, from the sin of the world. And then when the angel appeared unto Mary, he said, concerning Jesus, he said, you shall call him. This son that you will bear by the Holy Ghost, you shall call him Jesus because he is the one who will save his people from their sin. So Jesus came 
to take away the sin of the world or to save from sin. That was his mission. But the same Jesus said something to the Pharisees. Look at what he said to them. John chapter 8 verse 24. How could a man who came for one mission to take away the sin of the world now make this statement that I'm about to read to you now? John chapter 8 verse 24. Look at what Jesus said to the Pharisees. He said, therefore, I say to you that you will die in your sin. This is Jesus talking. He said, I say unto you that you will die in your sin. Why would they die in their sin? I thought you came to save the world from sin. I thought you came to take away the sin of the world. How could you now be telling us that we will die in our sin? We were already dead in sin. That was why God sent you to come and save us from sin. How could you now be telling us that we will die in sin? Is it that you don't have the power to save us from sin? Is it that you don't have what it takes or you don't want to go to the cross anymore? No. He was still going to go to the cross. <laughs> he was still going to fulfill that mission of saving the world from sin. But why did he say to the Pharisees that they would die in their sin? And how come it was only the Pharisees that he said that to? He never said that to the prostitutes. He never said that to the alcoholics. He never said that to the tax collectors. Only the Pharisees he told that they would die in their sin. You know why? You know why? Because of unbelief. The only sin that cannot be forgiven, the only sin that is not covered by the death of Jesus Christ, the only sin for which there is no other sacrifice is the sin of unbelief. The sin of rejecting the only sacrifice. The sin of rejecting the only Savior. The sin of rejecting the salvation that has been provided for you. And so Jesus said to these guys, look at what he said to them. He said, therefore I say to you that you will die in your sin. Why? Look at the next line. Unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. He said it twice. Unless you believe that I am the Messiah, unless you believe that I am your Savior, you will die in your sin. The same Jesus who came to take away the sin of the world, the one who was born into the world, and the angels were glorifying God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill to men. That son that was born in the manger, that was said to be the one who will bring in everlasting righteousness and take away sin. It is the same son, the same Jesus, who is speaking here and telling the Pharisees that they will die in their sin. Why? Because they have refused him. The only way to get out of sin, the only way to come out of condemnation, the only way to escape the wrath of God, the only way to pass from death to life, the only way, Jesus Christ, they rejected him. They did not believe in him. And because they did not believe in him, Jesus told them they would die in their sin. No other person did Jesus tell that they would die in their sin. No one. Even the prostitutes that was anointing, you know, his, his feet with oil in the house of the, uh, the, the, one of the Pharisees. Now, even that prostitute, Jesus never said that she would die in her sin. You know why? You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, this woman has so many sins. He said, all her many sins shall be forgiven. Talking about the prostitute. All her many sins shall be forgiven. Why? Because she believes. She believes. Again, he said to the Pharisees, he said the prostitutes and the tax collectors are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. Why? Because they believe. He said, but you, Pharisees, you have refused to believe. 
He said, John the Baptist came preaching to you. You have refused to believe. Even me, I have come. You have seen me. You have seen the work that I have done. But you have refused to believe. And because you refuse to believe, you will die in your sin. But the same Jesus spoke concerning the prostitute and said, all her sins are forgiven because she believes. The woman caught in adultery, he said to her, I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. I do not condemn you. A man that was, that was lame was brought to him and Jesus said, Jesus said, he said, your sins are forgiven. And his sins were forgiven. But the only people that he told that they would die in their sins were those who refused to believe in him. That is why I'm telling you that the only sin, the sin of the world, that cannot be forgiven, the unforgivable sin, that sin that leads to death, that sin unto death, is unbelief in what Jesus has done on the cross. And I want, I want, to, I want to beg you that are listening to me today, if you know anybody who has not believed the gospel, I beg you, go and encourage them to believe. Because, you know, they are thinking that they cannot approach God. A lot of people are thinking that, oh, we cannot approach God. Our sins are too numerous. You know, I'm a drunkard, I'm a fornicator, I'm this, my, I, I'm, I'm a homosexual, I'm this, I'm that. I can't come to God. No, 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 no. The only time Jesus ever said that people would die in their sin was when they didn't believe in him. So it does not matter how many sin anybody has. Go and call them and tell them that salvation is available in Christ. That Jesus can cleanse them and forgive them all their sins. They only need to believe. And if you are listening to me today, it does not matter how many sins you are struggling with. The Bible said that if you can just believe, you will have eternal life. You will not perish. If you can just believe. If you can just believe. That is why he said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It is not 613 commandments, no. It is not about 10 commandments now, no. It is about, will you believe in what I have done on the cross? That is the light burden. That is the light yoke. My burden is easier. My yoke is easier. My burden is light. Simple. Just believe. Before he came, man was required to obey 613 commandments before he could be saved. But now, there is an easy yoke and a light body. And what is it? Come and believe in what Jesus has done. If you can believe in him, forget about your sins. <laughs> they are taken care of. They are forgiven already. If you will just believe, you will have that eternal life. You will, be, you will pass from death unto life. And you will not face the wrath of God. You will not be judged. Why? Because whoever believes in him is not judged. So the Bible says. But if you refuse to believe, if you refuse to believe, even if you are a self-righteous person, even if you are so pious, you are so religious, even if you have done, you've tried to obey all the commandments of God, but if you don't believe, you will still die in your sins. <laughs> now, how could it be that you are obeying all the commandments of God, which I know nobody can obey, really? 613 commandments. Nobody has been able to obey them. And nobody will be able to obey them. But if you claim that you have obeyed all of them, and you are righteous by your efforts, I'm sorry to announce to you that you will still die in your sins. Why? Because that was what the Pharisees did. They were trying to live by their own human efforts. They are trying to live by their ability to obey commandments. And so they did not believe in the sacrifice of Jesus. So if you don't believe in the sacrifice of Jesus, and you are morally upright in your eyes, <laughs> you look holy in the eyes of other people, but you have not believed in Jesus Christ, you will still die in your sins, so the Bible said. Because sin is not taken away by morality. Sin is not taken away by being pious. Sin was only taken away by one sacrifice. And that sacrifice is Jesus Christ. And if you believe in him, 
All your sins are taken away. All your sins are forgiven. So I dare you today to believe in him and have eternal life and have everlasting life. There is no way of escape. How shall we escape if we neglect this great salvation that is available in Christ? How shall we escape? There is no way of escape. Now, let's go ahead. I have a few more scriptures if you guys are still here with me. If you are not in a hurry to go, I have a few more scriptures to, to, to share with you. I have a few more scriptures. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews 3, verse 19. Hebrews 3, verse 19. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read uh, Hebrews 3 now. You know, in the, in the Old Testament, there was a promise. And there was a promised land. The promise was that God was going to give Israel a land, a promised land. But not all of them got to that promised land. A lot of them died on the way. And I'm going to tell you why they died. Why they could not enter into rest. Why they could not enter into their promised land. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 19. The Bible said, the reason they could not enter One reason, only one reason why all of Israel could not enter into the promised land. Only one reason. And what is that reason? Unbelief. The Bible said, so we see that they were not able to enter. They were not able to enter the promised land. They were not able to enter into rest. They were not able to receive salvation because of unbelief. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. It is the same thing today. There is a rest available. There is a promised land available. All those who believe, they have entered that promised land already. Why? Because they have passed from death to life already. But those who do not believe, will not enter the promised land until they believe. Those who will not believe will not enter into life until they believe. So, so we see that they could not enter into the promised land or they could not enter into rest because of unbelief. The only reason why the Jews could not enter the promised land was because of unbelief. Now, go to Hebrews chapter 4. I told you that um, I'm going to be starting a series with Mr. Richard on the book of Hebrews. So I'm going to take the book of Hebrews from chapter 1 to the end. There is so much truth in the book of... You won't believe it. There is so much truth in the book of Hebrews that by the time we are done with the book of Hebrews, you will be so sure of your salvation eh, that nobody can threaten you of losing salvation or of, you know, of hell or of lake of fire. Nobody will be able to threaten you. You will be so sure of your salvation by the time we finish the book of Hebrews. Now, Hebrews chapter 4, from verse 4 to 6, the Bible said, For he spake in a certain place concerning the seventh day, and God did rest on the seventh day from all his works. God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, he said, if they shall enter into my rest, my rest, talking about salvation from works, from dead works, salvation, eternal life. Verse 6, Seeing, therefore, it remained that some must enter therein. They must enter into life. They must enter into salvation. They must have eternal life. And they to whom it was first preached entered not. The first people that the salvation message was preached to, the Bible said they did not enter. Why didn't they enter? Because of unbelief. Because of unbelief they did not enter. 
Because of unbelief, they did not enter. The Bible said he came to his own. And his own received him not. The Jews. Jesus came to the Jews first, but they received him not. <laughs> and because of unbelief, the Bible said they could not enter. The same thing happened in the wilderness. Because of unbelief, they could not enter. When Jesus came, he came to his own people first. The gospel was preached to them first, but they rejected him. And they could not enter. But as many that received him, he gave them power to become sons of God. You know that already. Okay. So why didn't they enter? They did not enter because of unbelief. Now, look at the next verse. Go to verse 11. Verse 11. They say Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. The Bible said, Therefore, let us be diligent. Let us labor. To enter into that rest. How do you enter into that rest? By faith. How do you enter into that salvation? By faith. How do you pass from death to life? By faith. Say, so let us labor to enter into that rest. This labor is not the works of righteousness. No. This labor is not the Ten Commandments. This labor is not rules and regulation. This labor is faith in Christ Jesus. So, we are laboring to enter by faith. So, what does it mean? That you must do everything possible to have faith in the Son of God. And once you have faith, you have entered. Those who do not have faith, they must labor to enter. Those who have faith, they have entered already. He said, therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rests so that no one will fall through following the example of unbelief. You see that? Unbelief. So, he was speaking to his brethren, the Jews, and he was telling them, he said, you must do everything possible to believe in this Jesus Christ. Because if you don't believe in him, you will be like those people who could not enter into rest. So your only labor is labor to believe. Make sure you believe in this Jesus. Once you believe in this Jesus, you enter into rest. And it is settled already. So how do we enter into rest? By believing. So what is the sin of the world? Why is it that the world has not entered into rest? Because the world has refused to believe. And that is their only sin. I think I wanted to do a part two to this sin of unbelief. Because I, I still have a couple of scriptures here. I mean, a couple of scriptures I have here. To share with you about the sin of unbelief. And I'm going to also touch, I'm going to touch, um, you know, Hebrews chapter 10, that willful sin that people are afraid of. I'm going to talk about the willful sin under the sin of unbelief in the past two videos. But today, what have we learned so far? We have learned that there is no judgment, there is no judgment. For those who have believed. But for those who have not believed, they have been judged already. And the wrath of God abide with them. For those who believe, they have passed from death to life already. But those who do not believe, they will not see life. They will not see life. For those who believe, there is no condemnation for them. There is no justification, there is no you know, condemnation for them, but they are justified in Christ. For those who believe, all their sins have been forgiven in Christ. But for those who do not believe, they will die in their sin if they don't believe. That is what Jesus said. So if you are listening to me today and you have not believed in the name of the Son of God, I dare you today, I implore you today to come and believe in Christ so that you will have eternal life. Salvation is available. Righteousness is available. Come and receive it by just believing. Otherwise, there is no other way. Only one way and his name is Jesus Christ. He tasted death for you. If you believe in him, 
you will never die again. That was what he said to, to Mary and Martha. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me will never die. But if anyone is dead and believes in me, he shall live. And I want to say that again. Jesus speaking to Mary and Martha said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will never die. But if any man is dead and believes in me, he shall live. So friends, if you are dead in sin, you can live again. How? By believing in Jesus Christ. But if you have already believed in Jesus Christ, and I'm glad to announce to you that you will never die. Why? Because they that believe in him will never die. Not only will they never die, they will never be judged and they will never be condemned and they will never be put to shame and they will never be confounded. Anyone who believes. So I encourage you to believe today and be saved. Salvation is available. Do not reject the only sacrifice that has taken away the sin of the world. Don't reject the sacrifice of Jesus. If you reject the sacrifice of Jesus, you will have yourself to blame. But if you accept him today, he, he died for you and he loves you so much. That was why he died on the cross for you. The only thing that is required of you now is to believe that he is the Messiah and that he is the Son of God and that he died for your sin. If you can believe right now, you are saved. That's it. So, I'm going to do a part two to this video. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to promise any day, but I hope before the week runs out, I'm going to do a part two to this video, the sin of unbelief or unbelief, the sin of the world. And in that video, I'm going to talk about the possibility or the impossibility of believers losing their salvation. And that is where the debate of once saved, forever saved comes in. I'm going to talk about that in the next video, right? And I'm also going to talk about the assurance that is available for those who believe in Christ and how the world can believe and be saved also. So just watch out. Um, between now and Sunday, I should be live again. Once you get the notification, please join the broadcast. It's going to be a blessing to you. And don't forget that uh, uh, Mr. Richard and myself will be starting a series on the book of Hebrews very soon. Very soon. We're going to start the book of Hebrews. So you can go ahead and read the whole of Hebrews and get all your questions ready for us, you know, before we begin. So I want to appreciate every one of you. Pastor Neuron is just coming. You're welcome, sir. I'm sure you'll be able to watch the broadcast again when we're done. Uh, thank you everyone for your contributions, for sharing the video and for inviting your friends. If you have any question from this teaching, please feel free to write me on my inbox or write, a, write it on the comment section for everyone to see and then um, we'll be able to provide answers to your questions. But um, with my broadcast with Richard, uh, you will be able to call in and ask any question that you want to ask. But for today, just um, write your question on the comment section and I will answer them either um, in the next video or before the next video. I will respond to your questions in the comment section. Thank you, everybody. And do have a lovely month ahead. Shalom.